And let's go now to Anthony Albanese speaking in Sydney. And friend who passed away this Australia Day. Tom Uren was a giant who walked in this nation and left a nation that he served and loved better off for his presence. For 93 years, uh, he was uh, someone who I think leaves us as a great Australian. Tom Uran is a link to Australia's past and how we've become the nation that we are today. Born into the Depression in Balmain in 1921, he moved to Manly, where he became an active sports person, being a surf lifesaver, a representative football player and a professional boxer. In 1941, like many of his fellow Australians, he signed up to the Australian Army. He was captured by the Japanese in 1942 on Timor and served there in Singapore on the infamous Burma Siam Railway and at the end of the war had been taken to Japan where he served as part of that slave labour force in the lead up to the end of the Second World War. From there he was able to witness on the horizon the dropping of the second atomic bomb on Nagasaki. He then returned to Australia whereby he became a manager at Woolworths at Lithgow. He went into federal parliament after having been inspired to join the Australian Labor Party in 1958. He served as the federal member for Reid for some 32 years and served as a minister in the Whitlam and the Hawke governments. His legacy as someone who was passionate about the natural and built environment, passionate about civil liberties, passionate about peace and social justice, passionate about the rights of working people and the underprivileged, is a legacy of which he was rightly proud. Tom Uren continued up until the end as an advocate for social justice and was very proud of the decision by Julia Gillard and the Labor government to grant justice to the former Japanese prisoners of war just in the last few years. Tom Uran was a man of principle. He didn't just talk the talk, he walked the walk. He cared about his community and he cared about his nation. Tom Uren uh, didn't go through the Second World War and come out as many could understandably have come out with bitterness. He spoke in his first speech about the philosophy learnt on the Burma Siam Railway as part of Weary Dunlop's uh, force there. It was a philosophy that said that the Australians were better off because the fit looked after the sick, the young looked after the old and the rich looked after the poor. Under Weary Dunlop's leadership, the officers in the Australian force shared according to need with those of their fellow prisoners who needed that assistance. It is remarkable that Tom Uren came through that experience as an advocate for reconciliation, as an opponent, not of the Japanese, but as an opponent of militarism. And he lived that way his entire life. When it came to injustice such as the Queensland anti-march laws, he didn't just march, but went to jail for refusing to pay the fine. Wherever injustice was, he stood up. He became an outspoken advocate for the rights of the East Timorese, in part because he believed that Australians owed the East Timorese a debt due to what they did for our forces during the Second World War. He was someone who could reach across the political divide. He was a builder of alliances. When I nominated him for the Companion of the Order of Australia that he was granted just a couple of years ago, 
his support letters came from Julia Gillard, the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, the leader of the opposition, and Bob Brown, the leader of the Australian Greens. All three of them strongly supported this highest of Australian honours being granted to Tom Uren. Tom Uren passed away peacefully and I was able to spend time with him uh, just two days ago. Uh, he leaves a legacy that is enormous uh, for our movement. He was a lover of people and of the community and the community gave him that affection back. And I, I mourn him today, I pay tribute to him, and I thank him for, uh, on a personal level, for his mentoring of me. Uh, he was the closest uh, that I had uh, to a father figure over the last uh, 30 years, when as a very young man, uh, I went to work for him. And it was an honor and a privilege to be his comrade and his friend. Can you tell us a little about that time that you spent with him a couple of days ago? Well, Tom had uh, uh, suffered uh, considerably in recent times. Uh, as a prisoner uh, in the Second World War, he went through uh, what uh, his fellow prisoners went through, malaria, cholera, the diseases, the suffering uh, that they went through that's outlined uh, so uh, vividly in uh, Richard Flanagan's book that won the Booker Prize uh, last year. I must say I asked Tom uh, about, uh, about that. Uh, he didn't have to read any of the books or, uh, or any of the histories because uh, he was there. Uh, but uh, eventually, uh, in terms of his illness, he'd spent uh, recent months uh, in uh, Lulworth Worth as part of St Luke's Hospital uh, at, uh, at one stage, we had uh, Tom Uran, Gough Whitlam and Neville Ran all being looked after and cared for uh, so well. And uh, he would have liked to have uh, passed on uh, his thanks uh, to the nursing staff and those wonderful, compassionate people who do such a remarkable, remarkable job uh, for uh, looking after people uh, towards the end of their life. And did you ever tell him that he was like a father figure to you? Oh, look, many times. And uh, he's, uh, I loved him. Uh, he uh, told me on uh, Saturday that uh, he loved me. How tough was that then for you? Oh, look, it was, it was, it's been a tough period, but um, Tom, uh, in the previous time when I was there a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had one-on-one uh, -on -one time. Uh, Tom uh, was, uh, was ready to go. Uh, he uh, said uh, that, uh, uh, he said to me uh, that, that death is a part of life, uh, is the, the end period. And uh, he had led uh, such a remarkable life uh, to uh, have that contact that he had with uh, many tens of thousands of, uh, of Australians to, to walk down a street with Tom Uren and to see uh, the love that people had for him and the respect that people had for him uh, was uh, quite, uh, quite remarkable uh, and uh, I think uh, just shows uh, the person that he was. Uh, in the noise of politics, where so much of it is, uh, is petty uh, in modern politics. Tom Uren always soared above the pack with his vision, with his principle, with his ideals, and with his determination uh, to achieve progressive change for this country and indeed uh, for the world. Uh, I had him as a guest uh, for uh, President Obama's address to uh, the Parliament uh, just a few years ago and uh, moments like that were a great honour uh, to spend with someone like Tom Uren who had of course that connection going back uh, to the Great Depression and that experience and uh, that uh, humility uh, that he had. What do you think modern Labor needs to take from 
his experience and his role in shaping, I guess, the party as, as it is today. Look, Tommy Rem was an inspiration to many. Uh, he's a man of principle, uh, but he is also a man who got things done. Uh, he was pragmatic uh, when he needed to be. He was about outcomes and uh, he was about building alliances as well. Uh, Tommy Rand worked very hard on the, uh, the Sydney Harbour National Park issue. We had a joke uh, just a couple of weeks ago about uh, the issue uh, that uh, appears to be happening in uh, Tony Abbott's own electorate. Uh, Tommy Rand had a good relationship with Tony and uh, he certainly said that uh, he wanted to have a word with him at one stage about making sure that nothing, nothing infringed on uh, the principle of uh, that, uh, that Sydney Harbour National Park that he fought so hard for. The important thing uh, about Tom is his legacy in terms of the Register of the Nationalist State, uh, the built environment heritage, but also the natural uh, environment heritage that he was such a part of uh, building. Uh, he was prepared to reach out uh, across the aisle, whether it be to John Howard or to, uh, to Tony Abbott, or whether it be to people in the Greens political party, whilst remaining an absolute uh, true believer uh, in, uh, in the Labor Party. Uh, he insisted he insisted on door knocking in the last uh, federal campaign in 2013 uh, for me um, and uh, ringing people uh, for me uh, when uh, the, uh, the leadership uh, ballot was on between myself and Bill that he saw as a great uh, improvement uh, in the Labor Party and he certainly encouraged me uh, to say the least to run. This is one of the last of perhaps the old guard of the Labor Party, many of whom have passed away recently. Uh, that's right. It's been a very uh, it's been a very sad 12 months for the Labor Party to see giants like uh, Neville Rann, uh, Gough Whitlam, and Tom Moran, uh, giants right here in New South Wales uh, of uh, the Labor Party, uh, but uh, all of them uh, remained very positive about uh, the future uh, right up until uh, the end and uh, Tom was a very passionate uh, servant as he put it of the people and he saw the Labor Party as the vehicle uh, to achieve uh, that change through the Parliament but he also saw and played an important role in uh, the Labor Party's principles of action uh, which is part of the socialist objective that isn't looked at uh, by as often, by as many as look at the, uh, the first few lines. But that principle of action speaks about community action, action by trade unions and action by broader society. Uh, Tommy Ram was someone who was a, a regular uh, marcher. He was someone who was active in civil society and understood that politics didn't just happen in the parliament, it happened in the meeting rooms, on the streets, around the family dinner table and around the local RSL or sporting organisation as well. Well, well, with all due respect, I mean, there don't seem to be those sorts of giants and such staunch believers in the Labour Party at the moment who wear their, their hearts on their sleeve and prepared to take massive political risks if necessary to actually carry out their own true beliefs. Would you accept that? Uh, no, I accept that, uh, that Tom Uran was a giant of the movement and uh, you don't have to, and he certainly wouldn't want anyone to be denigrated in order to praise him. What Tom Uran was, was an optimist and was positive. Uh, he never succumbed, he never ever succumbed to uh, negative politics. And uh, that is pretty remarkable given uh, the tough life uh, that he had and I think that is one of the reasons why he is such an, an inspirational figure uh, to myself, to my generation and to generations to come who will be able to uh, have a read of Straight Left, his autobiography and to uh, read about uh, his circumstances. Uh, he spoke many times of the success of the Labor movement 
He even in his first speech he spoke about the success of the labour movement in having gains uh, which improved living standards. Of course that occurred uh, as a result of his contribution after he was a member of parliament and others who've come after then as well. Uh, he was a great uh, uh, believer in local government and uh, he I think is seen by many as the father of local government in the federal sphere. It is because of him that there is that direct financial assistance grants to local government and that local activity. He saw politics as being from the ground up and uh, right unto the end he remained, uh, he remained faithful uh, to his beliefs and he retained a faith in people to be able to, res to, be able to advance progressive change. He used to speak about and uh, he used to uh, uh, dismiss uh, some of the romantic notions that are there that there was a golden era in the past but not the future. He spoke about environmentalism, for example, and how far that had moved from the time when he was made Labor's first environment spokesperson. When he was in Parliament, there wasn't even an environment minister. Now, the environment is a core issue that is critical uh, to all political parties in this nation. Thank you. Thank you.